Hello everyone and welcome to a Gruel deck tech. Um, so the Gruel deck, for those who don't know, I played it in this past weekend in the MPL Rivals split, okay? Um, had a positive win rate with the deck with still one match left to play. And I do think that Gruel is kind of just the default top deck in the format i'm not saying that gruel can't be beaten but the deck is just really really good it's been a, a long long time since we've had a, an aggro deck in standard this strong so if you have played recently on the arena ladder i'm sure you've run into the deck so i'm going to be getting over kind of going over kind of the nitty gritty um so of course we've got the Edgewall Innkeeper plus our adventure creatures. That's what makes it Gruel Adventures. Um, now, not as many adventure creatures as maybe you might see in some other adventure decks, and that's okay, right? Lovestruck Beast and Bone, Struck, uh, and Bone Crusher Giant are just great cards. Like, we would probably want them in the deck even if we didn't have the Innkeeper, so it's just kind of a bonus synergy. And then we've got a couple other energy... Uh, sorry, any a couple other adventure creatures um, to go with our edge ball innkeeper um, because I've seen versions with only the bone crusher giant and the love struck beast but I like having another couple of ways to to draw cards off of your innkeeper and so rimrock knight and ember shieldbreaker the shieldbreaker is a new choice here it's kind of nice in the mirror to have a you know an artifact destruction spell even against food you can kill a food you can kill a witch's oven against decks like esper doom sometimes they've got artifacts as well so it's rarely going to be a dead card glass casket there's um and then sometimes you just have to play it as a 2-1 which isn't that exciting but hey it'll it, it'll get in there it'll attack for you fire prophecy um you'll see so we've got two copies main and two copies in the side and it's really here over the scorching dragon fires scorching dragon fire used to be in this deck but i found the loot effect being able to put a card on the bottom of your deck um as you cast this to be really really strong so i i've i've gone with the fire prophecies and i don't really anticipate going back to scorching dragon fires unless exiling becomes super important um, in fact, sometimes putting creatures in the graveyard and not exiling them is a bonus because we're playing sca Scavenging Muse, which wants cards to be able to munch on. Uh, but kind of the, the signature two drop of the deck is the Brushfire Elemental. So we have four copies of Fabled Passage. Some versions also play Evolving Wilds, but the card is just really strong. Uh, two drop. Sometimes it's a 5-5, five, five, sometimes it's a 3-3. Three, three. Keep in mind... Look at how many lands we're playing. We're playing 21 lands plus the four Kazanu Mammoth and the four Shadow Skull Smashing. That's that's 29 lands really all together. Plus we've got cards we can draw into lands with Fire Prophecy. So yeah, just a ton of mana sources in the deck. We're likely to be able to hit our land drops um, to trigger our Brushfire Elemental. And we, I've also got a Thrashing Bronzodon just because as I was saying, artifacts... And to a lesser extent, enchantments are just super popular right now. Great Henge, Embercleave, we'll be getting to those now. Those are kind of our top end plays, our ways to close out games in a hurry. We can turn for the Great Henge fairly easily, actually. Um, and so we're going to do that either a Brushfire Elemental, playing a Fable Passage, that'll allow you to turn for a Great Henge. Love Struck Beast. And then just four lands, that'll allow you to Great Henge. Same thing with Kazandu Mammoth. Now, sometimes with the Mammoth, if you have it alongside the Fables, you can make this a 7-7, seven, seven, and then Great Henge is only two mana. So, um, yeah, Great Henge comes down early and often, and then it's able to just kind of generate um, a huge amount of card advantage and take over the game. Now, the way you take over the game is just accumulating so many cards and huge creatures over the course of a couple turns, Embercleave is kind of the opposite, right? You're actually just killing your opponent right away. With the Cleave, it's like, okay, you're dead or you're very close to dead. The turn, I'm going to cast Embercleave and immediately equip it up to one of my large creatures. So there are a couple different game plans. Certain matchups, you want to be more aggressive. Certain matchups, you just want the, the long game card 
in the Great Henge. Um, Questing Beast is a card I've recently added back in because I think it's good against some of these Esper uh, decks that have started the game popularity. It's just another creature to attack them with. I was playing two Ox down to one. Basically, I, I like Ox. I just think it's a good card. And if Rogues is popular, which has actually get, lost a little bit of popularity uh, in the p past week or two, but Ox is just a, a, an awesome main deck card, and I expect that I'll still be playing versions with multiples in the main. Right now, I'm still I'm at one just because I want to have the, the access to the two Vivians in the main because this card is... It, it basically is a card you want in every matchup, um, is what I've found. So even though for the MPL split I have them in the sideboard, now I've moved them back into my main deck. Let's talk about the sideboard a little bit. So Fire Prophecy, we that's going to come in in all of your creature matchups, like your rogues, like your mirror matchups, um... Wilt is a really nice option to have. That's also a card that comes in the, in the mirror. It comes in... Sometimes I won't board it in on the play in, a, in every matchup where it's good, but like against Esper Doom on the draw or against Food on the draw, I always want it. Phoenix of Ash and Ox of Agonis. Primarily, there for... Well, Phoenix is basically only for um, rogues. Ox I board in a lot more often. Like, if I'm playing against Rakdos, I'll board in my Oxes. Or just anything where I want. Any deck where I think I'm going to play a long game and I want some more card advantage. I'm going to go with Ox. Similarly, Quest Questing Beast comes out a lot, but I want this against Esper Doom. So that's why I have the one copy here. Um, and this is just kind of a metagamed out list. I went down... I've gone down to only... To Clothus, even though Clothus is an amazingly powerful card, it completely hoses Rakdos um, and is quite, quite good against Rogues as well. Some Those decks are maybe on a little bit of a downtick. Um, so we're going with two of those. Two of Chrome Wars, you can play some in the main for the Mirror, but it's not an amazing card really outside the Mirror match. So it's a little bit of a gamble to have the main i had one in my main uh for the mpl split now i have two in the side which i think it's fine because i've also got these these soul Seers, which are new additions to the deck now i really um am happy with that card i think it's good in the mirror but it's also a card i'll board in against decks that are trying to beat me with big creatures like you'll see random copies of bane slayer angel running around these types of cards that are just trying to beat you because you don't have the necessary removal for them soul Seer is going to be really really strong in those matchups so i'll board it in against esper um that is trying to go on a creature plan against me as well and as far as cards that i want to be taking out of my deck so um the brush fire elemental is a card that i'm boarding out in matchups like the mirror um matchups like rogues Basically, matchups that have a lot of cheap removal after sideboard, it's just not going to be as powerful. It's not a great top deck later on, so you, it's really mostly going to be with your aggressive plan. Like, if, if you are planning on winning the game quickly, like turns 4, 5, 6, like winning by, by then, then the Brush Fire Elemental is the way to go. But if you're on the draw a lot of times um in a, in a slower matchup, a more grindy matchup, you can take those out. You can become a more mid-range deck um similarly like the two drops a lot of times i do board out two drops if i think the games are going to go longer so like rimrock can come out Shieldbreaker is going to come out when there's not that many targets for it same thing with brontodon um cards i'm really never cutting innkeeper bone crusher uh love strike beef mammoth shatter skull so there's some cards that I'm, I'm just not not cutting would be these but then like brontodon Okay, my opponent isn't playing many artifacts or enchantments, or maybe isn't playing any of those. I'm cutting that. Uh, Questing Beast, I'm cutting it against the mirror, cutting it um, against matchups where they have good removal for it, because four mana, four, four, that dies to a heartless act or whatever. Like, I mean, it's not super exciting, but it can hold a, que a cleave quite admir admirably. I will cut this one ox. Um, just because sometimes we just, you just need a card to cut, but like, it's never going to be that bad. 
Uh, so like, you can't do it by playing one ox. It's like okay, you're fine. You can do that. And as far as the top end stuff, I actually will cut cleaves against rogues. I'll cut cleaves against matchups that are going longer. It's kind of similarly to how I'll cut brushfire elementals. Great henge. I rarely am cutting it just because it's so powerful. But there are matchups where you just want to be super lean, super aggressive. Maybe they have answers to these top end plays. And so, yeah, um, it's possible to want to cut that. So, yeah, this is my current version of Gruul. I expect it to change. I expect it to evolve a little bit more. But this is just a great deck. So if you want a great deck in standard, definitely play some Gruul. Try it. Give it a shot. And I think you'll like it. Mm -mm.